Hi. In this video, I would like to show you how you can use the two CVNs on the Minilog XD to modulate parameters on the Minilog XD with some external modulation sources. I think this is a really great synth, especially the oscillator section is very flexible and it's got some nice effects, but it only has two modulation sources, an envelope generator and only one elephone. Sometimes it'd just be nice to have more. Also, the modulation destinations are limited for the envelope to pitch, pitch for oscillator 2 and the filter cutoff. And for the LFO, we get pitch, shape and cutoff. In the menu, you can set what this shape should affect, whether it should affect all of the oscillators or only individual ones. Um, so now let's say, let's say I want to have a pulse width modulated sound. So I will turn this up. Now this works nicely, but now I've already used my LFO and I can't modulate anything else with an LFO. And this is where the CVNs can be really handy uh, because we can just use an external LFO to modulate stuff. In this case, I'm using the Neutron just because it has all these nice CV tools neatly put into this one very red box. And I've got those two cables already set up. There you go into the back of the mini log. The orange one is CVN1 and the gray one CVN2. So I'll plug the orange guy into the LFO output on the Neutron. And now you can already see if you have the uh, parameter displaying on on your display, um, that this goes negative, positive, negative, positive. If I adjust the rate here, it goes slower and faster and shape and all that. Yeah. So now I have to assign it to whatever I wanted to modulate. So for this, I go to edit mode, program edit, and then I hit the second button here, which is the CV input menu. The first menu point is the CV in mode, which is set to modulation right now, which is good. You can also use the CV ins for uh, pitch and gate, but that's not what I want here. So I'll leave it at modulation and I hit this button one more time and I get to CV in one assign, which is set to VCO one shape right now. Um, but I want to set it to something different. Maybe the VCO one, where is it? The level. VCO one level, so we get kind of a tremolo. Uh, so let's hear what this sounds like. Make it a bit faster. It works, nice, um, but it's a bit much. So I have to attenuate this. I can do this within the mini log. If I press this button one more time, I get to a menu where it says CV in one range, and this is set to a hundred percent now. If I dial this down the incoming CV isn't going to affect the level of VCO1 as much anymore. Another option to attenuate this uh, CV signal is just to do it um, on the neutron itself or whatever you're using for a uh, CV source. Uh, chances are if you have an external LFO, you also have an external attenuator. So instead of patching the LFO output into the mini log directly. I'll patch the LFO output uh, into attenuator one and then the output of attenuator one into the mini log. So now this knob right here controls the amount of a VCO one level modulation. Cool. So now I have the pulse width modulation and the tremolo for VCO1. Now the neat thing here is um, I can also use some uh, second degree modulation on the neutron. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to modulate the rate of the LFO. I could do that with an envelope. This, by the way, is the reason why I have this uh, MIDI cable plugged into the Neutron. Uh, the mini log is sending MIDI to the Neutron. You can see this light goes on every time I hit a key in the mini log. And this uh, triggers the envelopes. Um, without this, uh, I couldn't really use the envelopes. Um, the pitch, 
that the mini log is sending to the neutron right now isn't doing anything because we're not using the two oscillators. So I'll plug this envelope one output into the LFO rate input. And now this uh, sustain knob of envelope one sets the speed of the tremolo for the sustain stage. Um, if I make this shorter, it should be uh, very quick in the beginning and then quickly go down to the sustain level. If I dial up the release on the mini log here, uh, we should be able to hear that there's also a release stage. After I release the key, um, the envelope goes from the sustain level all the way down to zero. Nice. Now I want to attenuate this as well. So I'll plug this uh, into attenuator two and then attenuator two output into the LFO rate. So now attenuator two controls the amount of envelope modulation for the LFO rate. Or in other words, this decides how fast this guy is going to start or to what speed it's going up during the attack phase. So now if I make the decay a bit longer. We can hear it's only decreasing in speed a little bit in the beginning until the decay stage is finished and then it rests on the sustain level. Attenuator 1 still um, determines the amount of or the amplitude of the level modulation. Very nice. Uh, I'll dial this down one octave and maybe bring in VCO2. I do like the sound of that. So we have a second CV in on the mini log. So I'm going to use this as well and maybe modulate pitch with this as a source because we only have one LFO here. Unfortunately, I'm going to use an oscillator maybe. Uh, no. This, as you would expect, sounds a bit crazy because the oscillator, of course, goes really fast. But if we set this to the entire range and dial it down, it actually goes down to really slow tempos and can be used as an LFO. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is because I am sending MIDI notes to the neutron, the speed depends on what key I press. So here it's going to be faster than down here. And of course, uh, this is way too much as well, so I'll have to attenuate this as well. Uh, I will use the VCA for this. So instead of going directly from oscillator 1 to the mini log, I'll plug the oscillator 1 output into the VCA in. And of course, I have to plug the output of the VCA back into the mini log. So. Now I think uh, by default envelope one is affecting the VCA. So I'll plug a cable into the VCA CV just to get rid of that. Now nothing is happening here. And if I dial this up, we start hearing the vibrato. I'll make this a bit faster. I'll 
plug envelope two into the VCA CV. So I can set this to something that makes sense for uh, my application. Of this. With a really short attack and decay stages, they're not going to be all that noticeable, even though in the beginning, the vibrato might be going all crazy. We can't really hear that. And it might be a nice effect too. So if I turn this up, yeah, we hear kind of a pitch drift in the beginning. Uh, I'll dial this all the way down the bias. Then the sustain... Um, is going to determine how much uh, pitch movement you get. And of course, the tuning of the oscillator plus the key tracking determines how fast the vibrato is going to be. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Let's add some reverb, because it sounds really nice, the reverb on here, I think. Um. I'll increase the uh, filter modulation here a bit so get a nice attack even though the filter's closed. Maybe some delay too. And then maybe I'll add a sub octave here on the digital oscillator. reverb time a little bit and the release also so we get a really nice long tail uh, yes this is how the cvns work for modulation uh, let's maybe go through the available mod destinations real quick so we get gate time portamento vm depth which is the voice mode depth, uh, meaning uh, polyphonic, duophonic, or monophonic, and then the amount of detune. Uh, VCO1 pitch and shape, VCO2 pitch and shape, cross mod, multi shape, VCO1 level, VCO2 level, multi level, uh, filter cutoff and resonance, uh, amp, envelope, attack, decay, sustain, release, and 
uh, mod envelope attack and decay and amount, LFO rate and amount. And uh, mod time, this refers to the effects, uh, mod depth, also reverb time, reverb depth, delay time, delay depth, and that's it. So I'll set this to back to, what did I have it set to? I think the VCO1 level, yes. Now, the downside of this is we can't really save a patch like that with a device like the Neutron. You can't really save anything. So even though you can save it on the mini lock, um, you'd have to plug this thing back in and then set it back to wh where you had it before. So that doesn't really work. But if you want to record something and then work with the audio, this, I think, enhances the possibilities you have on the mini log. Um, let's maybe compare real quick what this patch sounds like without this modulation and with it so we can hear the difference. So I'll plug those two out one more time. And this is, this is what the patch sounds like without any additional modulation. It does sound very nice too. Um, and then this is with the modulation. I think this just adds a little extra movement, which can make all the difference. Yeah, very cool. Uh, so yeah, CVNs. That's how this works. I hope you found this interesting or helpful, and uh, thanks a lot for watching.